students so today i'm going to explain the molecular orbital energy diagram moed that is what are the very basics to construct the molecular orbital energy diagram so we are going to construct the molecular orbital energy diagram for the nitrogen molecule oxygen molecule and the fluorine molecule but before that we have to understand we have to know why exactly the molecular orbital energy diagram is came into picture came into the picture the molecular orbital energy diagram for the molecules is being constructed due to the following reason that is what is the significance of constructing the molecular orbital energy diagram the first reason why we have to construct the molecular orbital energy diagram is this particular molecular orbital energy diagram gives the information about the existence of molecule or not that is existence of molecule right so this molecular orbital energy diagram gives the information about the existence of the molecules in the terms of bond order in the terms of bond order now what exactly is the bond order bond order is nothing but number of bond so this is a simplified definition of the bond order the number of bonds present in between the two adjacent atoms in a molecule that is called as bond order and the bond order can be mathematically expressed as bond order can be mathematically expressed as bond order equals to 1 by 2 nb minus na where nb is number of electrons located in bonding molecular orbitals of a molecule and na is number of electrons located in anti bonding molecular orbital of a molecule now if the bond order of the molecule is 1 then we can say that uh, the single bond exists in between the two adjacent atoms in a molecule the single bond exists if the bond order is 2 then we can say that the two the two bonds exist between the adjacent atoms in a molecule if the bond order is 3 then the three bonds exist in between the two adjacent atoms in a molecule so based upon the bond order of the molecule we can know whether the single bond is combining the two adjacent atom in a molecule whether the dub double bond is combining the two adjacent atom in a molecule or whether the triple bond whether the triple bond is combining the two adjacent atoms in a molecule so this sort of information can be revealed by calculating the bond order of the molecule and the bond order of the molecule calculation is only possible by constructing the molecular orbital energy diagram now i have said that in the by means of that is in terms of bond order molecular orbital energy diagram is giving the information about existence of the molecule how if the bond order is one we are saying that the single bond is exist existing between the two adjacent in the bond molecule right if the bond order is two then two bonds are um, there between the two adjacent atoms in a molecule if the bond order is 3 then three bonds are there in between the adjacent atoms in a molecule and if bond order equal to 0 or less than 0 what does it mean what does it mean that molecule does not exist because the bond is the one which is holding the two adjacent atoms in a molecule if the bond is not there if the bond order is 0 means the bond is not there between the two adjacent atoms in a molecule if the bond is not there how the molecule is being formed because the bond is the one bond is the intermolecular force of attraction present in between the two adjacent atoms in a molecule if there are no intermolecular force of attractions in between the adjacent atoms in a molecule then the bond won't exist if the bond won't exist the two adjacent atoms in a molecule will not be held together 
overall we can say that that particular molecule will not exist in the nature. I will anyhow I will explain about the helium molecule why He2 will not exist in terms of the bond order in the upcoming video. So do remember that the first information which can be revealed with the help of constructing the molecular orbital energy diagram is existence of the molecule. So remember that if the bond order of the molecule is uh, less than or equal to zero, that molecule did not exist because I explained uh, the stuff behind it. And uh, the second information which can be revealed by means of constructing the molecular orbital energy diagram is it gives the information about magnetic nature of a molecule whether the molecule is diamagnetic or paramagnetic. So the construction of molecular orbital energy diagram gives the information about uh, the existence of a molecule that is existence of the molecule followed by magnetic nature of the molecule. So do remember that in the molecular orbital configuration which is being obtained after constructing the molecular orbital energy diagram if unpaid electrons are present in the highest energy molecular orbital then we can say that that particular molecule is paramagnetic in nature on the other hand on the other hand if in the highest molecular orbital all the electrons are paid up then we can say that that particular molecule is diamagnetic in nature right anyhow you are going to get the clear idea about the magnetic nature of the molecule by constructing the molecular orbital energy diagram of the three molecules which i am going to explain in the coming videos so do remember that the second information which can be revealed with the help of molecular orbital energy diagram is it gives the information about magnetic nature of the molecule whether the molecule is paramagnetic or diamagnetic and third information which can be revealed by means of constructing the molecular orbital energy diagram is it gives the information about the molecular orbital configuration of the molecule molecular orbital configuration of the molecule. How? We are going to discuss in the upcoming video. Next, with the help of constructing the molecular orbital energy diagram of the molecules, we can also predict the stability of the molecule. We can also predict the stability of the molecule. If the number of electrons located in bonding molecular orbital is more than number of electrons located in anti-bonding molecular orbital then we can say that the molecule is a stable molecule on the other hand if the number of electrons located in bonding molecular orbital is less than number of electrons located in anti-bonding molecular orbital then we can say that the molecule is less stable molecule less stable molecule Right. So, remember that this particular molecular orbital energy diagram goes, that is, it will give the information about uh, the stability of the molecule as well. If the number of electrons involved in bonding molecular orbital is more than number of electrons involved or located in anti-bonding molecular orbital, then the molecule is stable. On the other hand, if the number of electrons located or involved in bonding molecular orbital is less than number of electrons involved or located in anti-bonding molecular orbital, then that particular molecule is less stable. So these are the four informations which can be revealed by constructing the molecular orbital energy diagram. The first one is, it gives the information about the existence of the molecule in terms of bond order. The next one is, it gives the information about magnetic nature of the molecule, whether the molecule is paramagnetic or diamagnetic. The third one is, it gives the information about molecular orbital configuration of the molecule 
and the fourth one is it gives the information about the stability of the molecule based upon the number of electrons located in bonding molecular orbital and anti bonding molecular orbital now since childhood you are mugging up that up to 14 electrons that is the molecule containing up to 14 electrons that is in order to fill the electrons in the molecule comprised of the 14 electrons we have to follow one of the order and in order to fill the electrons in the molecule comprised of more than 14 electrons we have to follow another order right you have buttified you have mugged up right so up to 14 electrons what is the order which you have buttified or mugged up 14 electrons, the order is sigma 1s is less than sigma star 1s is less than sigma 2s is less than sigma star 2s is less than pi 2px, both are degenerated, pi 2p, pi 2py, pi 2p, pi 2px both are degenerated pi 2px similar to pi 2py less than sigma 2pz less than less than pi star 2px similar to pi star 2py less than sigma star 2p so this is the order for filling the electrons if the molecule contains up to 40 electrons right now if the molecule comprises more than 14 electrons then you will follow you will follow this rule more than 14 electrons will follow this rule that is sigma 1s is less than sigma star 1s is less than is less than sigma 2s is less than sigma star 2s is less than sigma 2pz is less than pi 2px similar to pi 2py less than pi star 2px similar to pi star 2pz less than sigma star 2p so dear students what you have done literally you have buttified right so Sigma 1s is less than sigma star 1s, less than sigma 2s, sigma star 2s, less than sigma 2pz is less than sigma 2px, similar to sigma 2py, less than pi star, less than sigma star 2p, exactly. Right. Now, what you have done, students? So literally buttified that if the molecule contains up to 14 electrons, this particular order should be followed. That is sigma 1s is less than sigma star 1s is less than sigma 2s is less than sigma star 2x. So these are the degenerate orbitals. Degenerate orbitals in uh, in the previous videos I have explained that degenerate orbitals are the orbitals in which uh, the energy is same, right? Less than sigma 2pz, less than pi star 2px, similar to pi star 2py, less than sigma star 2p. Now, in the case of the molecules containing more than 14 electrons, what is happening? That sigma 2pz is moving ahead of pi 2px and pi 2py. So, this is the difference. There is no difference here, right? So, there is no difference up to here, right? There is no difference. Only the difference is in the case of uh, up to 14 electrons, pi 2px similar to pi 2py. But uh, in the case of the molecules containing more than 14 electrons, the sigma 2pz is moving ahead of uh, pi 2px and pi 2py. Now, dear students, 
what you have done literally literally you have marked up that is up to the fourth electron that is if the molecule contains up to 14 electrons we have to follow this order and if the molecule contains or comprises more than 14 electrons then we have to follow this order is it a myth it is not a myth there is a theory behind it there is a theory theory behind it uh, that why we have to follow one rule for the molecules containing up to 14 electrons and we, why we have to follow the one rule another rule for filling the electrons in the molecules containing more than 14 electrons it is not a myth right so in the next video i am going to explain uh, this one only that is why up to 14 electrons the order of filling is different from the molecules containing more than 14 electrons so thank you for watching this video and one more request i want to make is if you are uh, not convenient with any of the topics related to the chemistry either it is the physical chemistry organic chemistry or uh, whatever the chemistry is so i will make each and every topic a piece of cake for you but you have to comment that is which topic you are expecting in the next video thank you for watching